This video is supported by Brilliant.org. So before I start explaining what SpaceX tries to do with Starlink, I want to give you a brief overview of the industry. The industry dynamic is very complicated, but knowledge of that is crucial in understanding Starlink's role in it. So here we go. We start off with the customers, all of us, who watch TV, browse the internet, and listen to radios. There will be no business if Starlink services are of no demand to us. That means, in one way or another, Starlink has to create value that ultimately benefit the population of the United States and then the world. So what is the service SpaceX intend to provide that other companies aren't or perhaps can't? That's the crucial question here. Starlink's main business that's approved by FCC is satellite internet services that send internet signals through pre-installed ground stations in your property to your devices. That includes your smartphones, laptops, tablets, smart TVs, so on and so forth. SpaceX has filed approval for building 1 million ground stations under its sister company, SpaceX Services Inc. This signals that with Starlink, SpaceX will no longer be a launch provider for satellites. It will start making satellites as well as ground stations, transforming itself into a holistic service provider. This is where the industry landscape becomes relevant. So who are the biggest players in this field? The biggest direct competition in the United States currently are HughesNet, Viasat, and Dish Networks, with HughesNet taking around 50% of the commercial market and all of them own satellite constellations in the sky right now. However, there's one little problem. Their constellations are in the geosynchronous orbit, and it's not much of a constellation to be honest. Most of their satellites are 36,000 kilometers away from Earth, and there are only around 20 satellites for each of them, as opposed to the planned 4,000 to 12,000 satellites from SpaceX. It's on a totally different scale. The upside for this is that the satellites are very far away. Hence, with just a few satellites, you can cover the entire North America. But on the flip side, this also means that their satellite signals will be weaker, hence less reliable and more susceptible to bad weather conditions. They would also have higher latency because of the physical distance between the satellites and our houses. We can expect on average 700 milliseconds of latency as opposed to the 10 to 60 milliseconds with cable internet. That's why satellite internet providers traditionally target customers in rural areas where cable cannot reach. However, with a modified plan, SpaceX are targeting low Earth orbit at around 550 kilometers away from Earth. This is only 1.5% of the distance covered by traditional geosynchronous satellites and therefore also 1.5% latency at around 10 milliseconds. This is comparable to cable internet and hence making Starlink a potential disruptor in the entire telecommunications market, not just competing with satellite internet providers, but also the cable ones. You don't see many media outlets talking about it, but here you go. With Starlink, SpaceX is transforming into a telco. This crucial advantage suddenly opens many opportunities for SpaceX. Satellite internet options have traditionally been desirable only in niche market where cables can't reach. But if Starlink succeed in building what I call an internet backbone in the sky, as opposed to our existing communications backbone on the ground, SpaceX will be a competent challenger in the content distribution market, disrupting huge household brands like AT&T, Comcast, and more. This is where real competitions and money comes in. Google invested $1 billion in SpaceX back in 2015, hoping that it could bypass telco companies altogether. And with Starlink, it's a possibility. Start off with the cable internet providers in the United States, Charter, Xfinity, Cox Communications are the biggest players in the market. But slowly, Starlink Internet could infiltrate the TV market, partnering YouTube and Netflix. A very interesting side note here, Amazon famously runs its own video streaming services, Prime Video. It also has filed for approval to send 3,236 satellites to the low Earth orbit. A more reasonable rocket for Amazon is Bezos' very own new clan, of course, but this does show the tremendous possibility both companies and their visionary leaders see in the industry. And it is imaginable that SpaceX could provide a better service than traditional companies. Telcos in the United States are notorious for its bad services, constantly being voted the most hated company. But how can we blame them? They never had a competent challenger. With essentially a communication backbone in the sky, Starlink together with the likes of Google, Amazon, and Netflix challenges the entire telco industry. But the fight is far from over. 
Not all telcos are pure distribution players nowadays. Many also own TV networks. NBC, for example, is owned by Comcast. AT&T also famously acquired Time Warner for $85 billion. That means anyone who's up to challenge AT&T must be prepared to lose its chance to stream any HBO shows, Adult Swim, and any Warner Brother movies like Harry Potter. This is the bundle of services that could eventually make it very hard for us to leave the traditional telcos for Starlink services. But this doesn't change the fact that SpaceX is on track to become a telecommunications company challenging all that we dislike about the old monopolies. SpaceX's current plan is to send half of the 4,000 satellites constellations by 2024 and the other half by 2027. So we can expect very swift changes in the coming decade. It would also be imaginable to have internet companies with Silicon Valley genes and content networks without telco affiliations and gel together to provide better services, especially considering Google's 10% stake in SpaceX and the complacent attitude among the traditional telcos in the United States. However, it would also be too idealistic of me to predict that telcos will be challenged and beaten. But one thing is for sure, more competitions will bring better services that eventually benefit us. A simple example from my personal experience, I live in Singapore and use services from a traditional telco called Singtel. My data plan per month was 3 gigabytes, and Singtel charges me over $30 for that. But now, with a young startup competitor providing 15 gigabytes with just $35, I recently received a message from Singtel giving me 12 gigabytes additional data per month for free. I have no complaint for that. Competition is a necessity if we want better services, and competition is what Starlink provides. This is SpaceX's original ambition according to its 2017 FCC license, to meet the dual requirements of the world's broadband demand, namely connectivity for rural, remote, and hard-to-reach end-users, as well as efficient, high-capacity connectivity at all locations. Many media outlets tend to focus on the first part of the plan, but I think it's clear. SpaceX is setting the stage for something much more ambitious, something that can make use of its ever more powerful rockets, and something that shakes the very foundation of the telecommunications industry. It doesn't explicitly say that yet, but time is ticking, and since SpaceX Starlink Endeavor ultimately benefits all of us, I've got no problem with a little disruption. Starlink is only possible with countless brilliant engineers working behind the scene. If you want to be one of them, Brilliant.org is a fascinating tool to help you get started. Not only will its daily challenges feature help you form a daily learning habit, its new offline courses will also allow you to learn wherever you are. Download any of their dozens of interactive courses through the mobile app, and you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science, and computer science no matter where you are or how spotty your internet connection is. What's awesome about these courses is that they're all totally interactive. You experiment with pendulum clocks to master the physics of motion, use rockets to model algebraic functions, and learn probability by playing casino blackjacks, making the learning experience more fun and rewarding. So if you want to support Curious Elephant and get unlimited access to all Brilliant's in-depth math and science courses, head over to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant to get 20% off the annual premium subscription.